Do you want me to lock that so it doesn't move? No, they're there. Interviewing, uh, interviewing today is, is uh, Coral the Pledge. Coral, yeah. it is the Pledge, isn't it? Yeah, the Pledge. The Pledge. No. In interviewing today is called the Pledge. Um, she will be doing all of the uh, interviews. You are recording, aren't you? Mm -hmm. I'm going to say, then I won't look silly just talking to the camera and it's not recording. <laughs> we, have Raph, we have Raph in charge of the camera. Um, we have Glenn that's also, sorry? Yeah, Dow Film. Is it Dow? Dow Film. Dow. Can we get who? Tagged? In what? I'm now tagging Sean Hardy into this interview. Uh, <laughs> I mean, no, it don't work. No, I mean, you do the page, don't you? And you Facebook page. Oh, dear. Sean, if you want to... Sean, you've got your little thing. If you want to tag on Facebook, you feel free. You do your little thing. You, Sean, 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 Sean go, and, go and play with the toys. Go and, go and play with the, in the... In the toys. Okay, right. I'm ready. Let's do it. <laughs> Introduce yourself and your role in this project for the purposes of this. Uh, yeah, my name's uh, Glenn Clinton and I'm the director of In Hindsight. Hello, I'm Matthew Elliott. Um, I am the writer and actor in In Hindsight. Hi, my name is Rafa Kutsamba and I'm the cameraman for the In Hindsight project. Yeah, my name's Sean. Um, well, most of the time I've been, uh, well, a cameraman, well, taking pictures and things like that. The first photographer that we had. Um, that's really the majority of the time what I, what I was doing. Like. Hi, I'm Craig Thomas. I played one of the bullies in the film for Matthew. Can you explain what this project means to you? Uh, it's uh, quite a, a bit of a touching project. Cause I, when Matt first told me the uh, idea behind it, um, I just think it was actually for uh, a very worthy cause, and I was far from the popular kid at school anyway. I wasn't quite bullied to, to the extent uh, Jake Foster is in the film, but I just thought it, went, it, it, it had an important message, and I think it was for a worthy cause. Um, the idea of this project came from, um, for the last few months and whatnot, I've been studying the effects of bullying and stuff, because I always kind of wanted to create a film that would be for the people that I knew back at school who were in that position and always kind of just felt like nobody really spoke out for them. Um, I know I didn't at school when there were people being bullied. I kind of just, I didn't join in, but I didn't step in either. So the idea of this film to me was, was just about kind of giving voice to people that went through that and the effects of it, how it affects um, families, um, and also it was uh, Tina Mayer from the Mega Mayer Foundation um, that I, when I got in touch with them, um, basically kind of just gave me that drive that I needed to, to write the film. Can you explain what this project means to you? Uh, well, this is my very first project in the filming industry uh, whatsoever so it's it was very nervous thing for, for me um, I'm not really uh, kind of getting emotionally into into the uh, into the movies since it's not really uh, I didn't have this kind of a pro uh, problems at, at, at school at my uh, my times uh, so it's more more uh, professional way for me no, the, the project, yeah, I mean, I've always been interested in projects. I just like doing general things, you know, with, with Matt and everybody else. It's just, it's a really fun way of, you know, doing things other than sitting in and makes, makes a change, you know, being different and whatnot. It's something that Matt messaged me about and I thought it's to raise awareness about bullying, cyberbullying, any form of bullying, so I thought, yeah, get involved, it's for a good cause and um, hopefully it'll help to stop it in the future. Um, I mean, it, it, it is not the, the happiest um, film, but I do think it's a very um, 
important uh, subject and, and I'm sure it's one of them kind of things which is like sweeped under the rug constantly and it's kind of highlights the plights that just because someone looks fine that actually in the inside they're definitely not um, bullying is a horrible thing. I would hope that the that the storyline kind of makes people understand the effects of their actions and that you know not everybody is strong enough to kind of deal with these situations and so just think twice and if you know somebody that's going through what the character of Jake Foster was going through, then, you know, stand up for them, help them. Because at the end of the day, that's what you'll be remembered for, not being a bystander. Well, it's a, it's a very, very hard subject. It's very uh, something that a lot of people don't want to talk about. It's just brushing things off under the carpet. And uh, I think we need more. Uh, movies like that with a really strong uh, language. Well, it's it, it, the movie. Our movie is not really with a strong language, but with a strong visual language. Well, the like I say, the, the message is, is, you know, about bullying, and I mean, we've all been bullied. I mean, whatever. This is the thing. Is it's just I've gone completely blank. <laughs> It's, uh, well, hopefully it enlightens the audience to things that perhaps they don't know happens in the world. I mean, bullying is not just effective in physical bullying, it's also as internet, social sites. Um, it opened my eyes to a lot of things that I didn't really know about. Talk about your experience with the team. So, can you tell us what it was like to work with Raph and Cameron? Uh, well, Raph, Raph was great. Um, I did meet him to the um, the first day of filming, and um, yeah, it was, it was a really good cameraman, and he, he got all the shots that I, I wanted. To be perfectly honest, and then later in the film, uh, as we was editing it, he did a fantastic job editing. So his editing even surpassed uh, his cameraman skills. So yeah, it was great working with him. Um, me and Raf um, currently work together. Um, we are the co-founders of Project Babylon, which is kind of like um, like an online studio publishing house that's trying to get as many groups as possible um, to kind of be involved so that the more people we have, the bigger our projects will grow. Um, Raf originally um, wasn't going to be a part of this project because he's working on his own stuff that I'm I'll let you, uh, him explain that if he wants to. Um, but basically, it just—it was the Friday, the day before the filming, and I just said to Raf at work, I just said, "If you're not busy tomorrow, do you want to come and watch watch us make a film?" And he said, "Yeah," and he eventually became the camera. Um, and he's here now. Hello, Raf. Yeah, Raf's yeah, quite quite funny actually. But yeah, Raf's Raf's a great cameraman as well. So yeah. And again, I only met Raf on the first day of shooting, and um, from the angles of the shots we got from, well, not really seeing the film yet, but from watching the playbacks on the cameras, I think uh, Raf pretty much nailed the filming. So again, he did a good job of the filming, and hopefully, work with Raf again in the future as well. Can you tell us what it was like to work with Glenn as the director? <sighs> Is Glenn in the room? No. <laughs> um, I just left. <laughs> Working with Glenn was brilliant because um, a few years ago I wrote an idea for a film. Um, it's quite difficult, to, but me and Glenn used to work for the same company, um, but in different places. And our company had like a website, which was kind of like an eBay for everybody that worked there. And I posted up one morning just saying, um, I've got an idea for a film. Does anybody know any directors and stuff? And at the time it seemed ridiculous, but I got one reply, and that was from Glenn. Um, eventually what happened was we were in contact for quite a while, but then the story that I was writing fell through, so I cancelled. Um, and then me and Glenn didn't talk for um, about two or three years, I think, or more. Um, 
and then just one day I just remembered that he was always interested in filmmaking. I'd thought about this project, um, but at the time we were starting a different one. And so we kind of got together and I decided he was like, kind of like the best guy for the job. Um, working with him was really interesting. I think one of the biggest problems is that in writing this film, um, I didn't prepare anybody um, for what was going to happen. I pretty much kind of just said, uh, just, be at, just be on the set on this day. And uh, they kind of didn't have a clue what they were doing. But yeah, I really enjoyed working with Glenn. And uh, hopefully I'll be working with him in the future in a few more projects. Uh, like I said, this was my very first uh, project as a uh, filmmaker, as a cameraman. So I had no experience, and uh, Glenn showed me a lot of a lot of new things. Yeah, yeah, Glenn. Glenn's a Glenn's a great guy. He makes me laugh. Um, yeah, he's, he's a really good director. When he when he says shoot a scene there, shoot a scene there, he really does really really great. Glenn does. He's a great guy as well. So. Well, I um, met Glenn on the first day of shooting for my scenes with Matthew when I had to chase him round. And um, as a producer, he helped me with positioning for the shots and um, me not really being much of an actor. He uh, pushed me in the right steps to get the best shots for the film. So um, I definitely enjoyed working with him and hopefully work again with him in the future. Matt, as the writer, um, acting as Jake Foster, and just in general? Yeah, it, it was really good uh, working with Matt. I mean, he was also the writer and um, the uh, actor in the film. I mean, he, he, he had the vision of what he actually wanted to do with it. And um, I, I hopefully got his vision as best as I can onto the screen for him. Um, I think out of these three things, his play was the best. Because... <laughs> uh, uh, well, he left us with a lot of uh, unknown things during the film making, so that was quite quite hard. Yeah, Matt, I mean, being my brother and everything. Yeah, he's, he's a he's a great writer. I don't know how he comes up with some of these ideas, but yeah, he's, he plays his role quite well, especially near the end scene. But yeah, that was quite amusing. As a writer, um, well, seeing as I only really got the first bit through a Facebook message. I didn't really see much of it, but he did a pretty good job. He got a, a good storyline and focused on a very good, strong point, and it seems to have come across quite well. As playing the bully to, towards Matthew, he pretty much did look pretty scared and uh, played the victim quite well. And um, as a general person, Dad to uh, quite enjoy his company from time to time. So. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a good friend. Okay, okay. Um, Lizzie is a photographer in general again. Yeah, again, Lizzie, I only met on the day of filming where we actually filmed the scenes uh, where Jake's actually bullied uh, in the pub. And um, I think Matt only met her a couple of days before on Facebook or something like that, I think. And um, yeah, she turned up, she's taken some great photos, and it's good to have her part of the team as well. Um, Lizzie's probably the person who's known me the less. Um, amount of time throughout this whole project because um, Lizzie, when was it? Was it the day before the first film shoot? Pretty that, much. Yeah, um, I'd gone onto Facebook and I was just kind of flicking through because we've got um, a Project Pavilion page, and um, I just randomly saw like a suggested ad in the in the corner. They're brilliant, they are. And um, so I clicked it and it was um, Lizzie's photography uh, page. So just randomly, I just sent a message because I'd seen some of the pictures. I thought they were really good. So I just randomly said, listen. And I always think whenever I send a message to somebody like this, I always expect it must sound ridiculous because all I'm saying is, hi, I'm making a film. Do you want to be involved? And uh, so that's pretty much what I sent. And um, I left the computer because I didn't expect a reply kind of at all. But I got one a few minutes later that just said, look, I'm busy tomorrow, but I can do next week. So yeah, so yeah, it was really it's been really fun working with Lizzie. Um, you know, no doubt there'll be some photos being taken today as well. So, oh, Lizzie was great. Um, she she's got very very good skills, and uh, some of the pictures were really really nice that she made. Yeah, Lizzie. Yeah, she's she's really good at photography. I wish I had a camera, but you know, it's one of the things. But 
But yeah, she's really good. Again, I just turned up at one of the shooting locations and Lizzie was sat all on a lonesome. I was going to see if she was waiting for Matthew, but I thought that would be a bit weird, just asking a random person. If she was waiting for somebody, then she approached me and asked if I was waiting for Matthew, so that's how we met. And as a photographer, I think Raf mentioned it, and she, she looked a bit nervous when obviously she went into a room full of men, just well, basically messing about at first. But she got some good shots, I've seen the photos, so um, yeah, quite enjoyed that. Um. Can you play Scarlett? Uh, yeah, these are all kind of... Um, of I think uh, Kim is another person, obviously, that uh, Matt knew for ages, and again, I just met her on the first day. Uh, I think she was she was kind of very nervous, because uh, the scenes she was actually in, it was not one of um, Matt's most um, descriptive what he wanted me to do. I kind of turned up, I thought, what am I actually doing? For, yeah, yeah, just kind of filming them actually alienating Jake so it was kind of so but it turned out really well and, and she actually was really good in it. Kim who plays Scarlet? Yes um, that was awkward um, that scene was because um, me and Kim have known each other for quite a few years and um, and I'd met her boyfriend the uh, the week before and then I'd kind of had to turn around and say uh, there's, there's going to be a bit of a sex scene in the film. I goes, it's nothing, you don't see anything. I says, it's more suggested. And so I kind of had to ask in front of a boyfriend, uh, listen, do you know how you wanted to play this character? Yeah, there's a, yeah, there's going to be a, a naughty scene. But yeah, she did it quite well. And um, what you'll probably see in the behind the scenes is that I'm going to put the, um, the footage that we actually shot on the day. Um, we'd muted it in the film, but you can hear us both bursting out laughing and the ear and the film crew were laughing so yeah it was fun working with her. Um, I've met most of the crew the, the very first first uh, first time on the uh, on on the shooting day so I don't really have a lot of interactions with them um, but she was good she, she was really uh, good nervous when she, when she walked into the room full of guys and she didn't really know what she's doing uh, she looks scared. Uh, yeah, Kim, yeah, I know, I've known Kim quite a while, but yeah, she played a really good role in that, but when she was laughing, when she was doing that scene with Matt, I was quite amusing, we had to cut that, but yeah, it was quite, quite funny. Lee, who plays Stevie? Again, I, I met him um, for the first time on that day as well, and he, he seemed a really nice guy. Again, was like he was a schoolmate of uh, Matt, and he did a good job. I mean, the, the best fun we had with him was trying to stage uh, an argument out of the window, which is involved an awful lot of wild hand gestures. Which I suppose if you just heard it with the dialogue, it would sound stupid, but because you don't really actually hear what they're saying, it looks quite powerful. But why filming it was kind of bizarre, but why actually seeing it in the final cut does look very effective. Um, Lee, I haven't seen, I'm 23 now, um, I haven't seen Lee since I was 17. No. 15, because uh, we went to school together and we used to live across the road from one another. And um, originally, my friend Dale um, was going to play the role of Stevie in the film, but uh, something came up at last minute, so, and literally, it was this easy to be in this film that Lee was just popped up on my newsfeed. Do you want to be in a film? Yeah, OK. That's it. To be fair, since filming, I've not spoke to him either. <laughs> uh, I probably won't see him again. Uh, he was natural. I mean, uh, you really... You can tell he's a kind of a very open person, very... He's got a lot to say, and he really fit into the role. Stevie, yeah, I've not, I've not spoke to Steve for a long while, but when, when you know, we bumped into him and he came to this scene, yeah, he, he did quite well, for, you know, plays a natural role, shall I say, you know, not too intense, but... Leon Craig and Luke, who play the bullies? They was kind of a bit scary, actually. <laughs> I think, uh, is it Luke, um, he kind of like, oh, I won't want to mess with him, but he's such a nice guy, and Craig was really, really good, and um, especially on the um, bits where he actually beats up... Uh, Jake and us chase him in the um, 
Forest and Leon was really into it. It was, it was really good. Said, again, these are people who met on the first day, and like I know them for ages. And it, it and actually, there, there was very convincing bullies that actually scared me. Oh, they were terrible, weren't they? Uh, well, yeah. Which I'll do here. No, um, they're my dr they're my drinking buddies. Um, we've we've had some good and crazy times together, um, but. I think pretty much again the same thing. It was just we were at. Do you guys want to be in a film? Um, Luke, the guy who throws his pint over me, he originally wasn't going to come at all because he didn't want any part of it. But he ended up playing his part really well. Um, that day of filming, Leon and Luke weren't going to turn up at all, were they? So there was there was Craig kind of there, just thinking, "Oh shit, I'm going to have to do all of this myself. I'm going to have to try and do. I need to play three people." No, no, you don't need to do that. Oh, well, that. Oh, oh. But yeah, um, yeah, brilliant. Um, you know, they're my, they're my best mates, so it was fun to have them involved. I still don't think uh, they kind of understand what it's all for. Uh, I could believe they're natural. They, they had some uh, practice before. Yeah, th those three, the, uh, they've obviously done that before, obviously. I mean, Sped, well, Luke, when he throws the pint, that was... It, you know, really good. All three of them are really good at that, actually. Um, you mentioned that you played um, the bullies with uh, Leon and Luke. What was that like? Well, I've known Leon and Luke a long time, so it was pretty easy just to get along and get into character with them. It was, it was a bit weird playing a bully, but I think we we got it down to it. And I think people have mentioned Luke does look pretty intimidating, so. It's not a nice thing having to play a bully, but hopefully it gets a, a good message out that it's, it's a bad thing and basically it shouldn't happen. Uh, I think um, Donna, uh, out of all the people in the film, I think was probably uh, the best because I think she was just the one she was really enjoying it and she like she she took my direction really really well and and she just basically just really threw herself into the role and a scene where she's actually reading the letter. Is really powerful stuff, and it's actually better than so many A-list actresses I've actually seen on the screen anyway. But I think she was excellent. I think she was probably gave the best performance in the film. Donna, which is Miss Foster. Yeah, my mum. Um, yeah, she, she was. She was probably the easiest person to get involved with the film anyway, because I just turned around and said I was making a film, and she just said, "Can I be in it?" Yeah, you can play my mum. So yeah, so Mrs. Foster in the film is yeah my mum. My so, yeah, it was fun. Uh, it's the first time she's ever made a film, and weirdly enough, it's the first time that she's ever seen a film that I've made, um, even the home videos when I was younger. So, yeah, it was quite. It was nice to have her involved. It kind of felt um, like I'd been able to involve her in something like this. So, uh, Matt's mom. She she was the star of the of the show. Definitely, she she's the the best actress, the actor we had. Uh, and if she's going to do any more movies, I'll gladly be the camera. And your mum, Donna, who plays Mrs Foster. Yeah, she, she absolutely was the best actor we had. I mean, the crying scene was unbelievable. It was so real. It was uncanny, really, but, yeah. Again, didn't work with Donna, but looking forward to seeing the shots which she's in. I, I, I imagine seeing as she's Matt's mum in real life, it was... Pretty easy to play the mother of, a, of Matthew in the film, obviously, for the shots that she had to do. I think I've seen a few photos from the shoot, so I think she's she got them down quite well. Okay. Okay, what about Sean? Yeah, Sean was <laughs> Sean was great. Uh, he's, he's, um, he, he was kind of over enthusiastic. I don't think he actually took it too seriously, but he was he was really good. But he does actually look really good on the camera. But he's a good friend, and he actually he put hundred percent in. Um, toilet break. <laughs> yeah, um, Sean was good. I mean, he yeah, he he, he, um, he was helping a lot. Yeah. What did Sean do? <laughs> um, yeah, Sean popping up down there. Sean. Um, from that, it was it was took a few photos and um, hopefully, when I've seen the film, I might actually see what Sean did in some of the other shots.
<laughs> Sorry, Sean. <laughs>
you know, so with, obviously with scheduling and um, not having much of a script to go on, I think that was probably, it needs to work on that in the future. How did you become involved in the project? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, it came because we, we both worked at the same place and uh, there's a kind of a thing on our workplace, a kind of exchange and mock kind of thing, and uh, Matt advertises anyone interested in making films. And I think I was about the only person who actually replied to him. And he was working on a film, I think it's something like based on a, a Japanese program or something. I can't remember exactly what it is. I think I still have got the script somewhere. And then it, that just kind of fell through and, and then I friended him on Facebook and I didn't really hear from a couple of years to be honest. And then I think he actually randomly messaged me on, or emailed I think me on uh, Facebook or Hotmail, I can't remember now, and says I've got something else. And then we met up at Christmas, we worked on a project and that fell through and then we just went out for some drinks and then basically Matt said I've got this other idea for a project around about June and I thought this sounds really good so we took it from there because find out this project we could actually literally do in about two or three days. Um, I, well, I'd, I'd written it kind of as as a dedication to um, Tina Mayer and all of the struggles that she'd gone through and to anybody else really who's who's ever um, lost lost a child to this kind of situation. Um, so I became involved with the project when I wrote it and then just hoped that everybody had kind of followed me down the rabbit hole and they did, um, brilliantly. Um, I work with Matt in, uh, in our daily job and uh, I don't know, we, we are working on uh, one project for nearly a year now that uh, we've started talking about but over the course of the year we c come up with additional stuff uh, and the inside side is one of them. Well, me and Matt, we've, we've for many years in the past, we did a lot of ACT stuff, and uh, you know we've we've done loads of projects, and they're not always great. Absolutely not. There's some silly films, you know, you know, Mr. Cookshank's unfortunate tenant, and things like that. I've been in it for quite a while, but it's just getting back into it. Matt. It's more serious. It's not comedy anymore. It's not messing about, and, you know, getting down and dirty sort of thing. <laughs> Uh, like I've, I've just said it was a Facebook message asking me if I wanted to be part of a film um, and as Matthew is a good friend of mine I thought if it helps him, if I can help him with the film then yeah, I'll, I'm on board.